Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it's Monday. It's April 13th. This will be our chart lesson for today. And even though it was a bank holiday, and the market was really pretty fairly flat here, but uh, there's still a lot of volume, still a lot of volatility here. Uh, so I don't think we're slowed down yet. They did drop the. Uh, somebody said something about since they dropped the. Um, Margin today, would I do the regular chart lesson? Well, um, even though there's not as much volume today, there's still a lot of volatility, a lot of volume. So I'm not quite ready to go back to the regular chart lessons. Although I did mark most all the trades today, and I'll go through them real quickly if I have enough time. I'll try not to spend a lot of time on the other stuff. I'll try to go through all these trades. And you can see there's at least 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 12, 13, 14 easy trades. And, the, and all these were fairly easy, too. So I'll go through and we'll talk about them. Uh, the key is just being patient and waiting on the good setups, not chasing trades, not trying to make trades. I'm going to show you a couple of trades real quickly, too, that people sent me and, uh, and just kind of show you the way it looks on my chart compared to the way it looks on their chart. And so that kind of leads me into saying this. Um, I get this a lot. A lot of people seem to use Thinkorswim. I don't know anything about Thinkorswim. I don't even know who offers that. If that's a, I don't know anything about Thinkorswim. Never looked into them, don't know anything about them. But a lot of people ask me about them. A lot of people tend to use them. I don't know if it's free, if it's cheap or whatever. But one thing you cannot skimp on, just make sure you understand this. And, and you may be paying a lot of money for Thinkorswim. I don't know uh, because I don't know anything about them. But before I used them, I would make sure I knew two things. I would, If I'm using their data, I'd want to know if, if it comes directly from the exchange, if it's filtered, and if it's got a delay or if it's instant. Right as, you know, make sure you're trading in current trading price prices as they're coming off instantly off the exchange if you're not using that or if they're filtering their data or anything like that don't don't use that data because uh, i know I, I know a good example because i've used theirs before. i've traded with interactive brokers before i still have an account there i don't and at one time i looked at use it somebody said oh they got free data well i looked at their data it's junk you cannot trade that data you, you miss half the, you miss, you're just not getting the whole picture. And, and trust me, if you're not getting real good data and you don't have good charting software, um, you're, at a, you're at a huge disadvantage. The one thing you can't skimp on is your broker. You got to have a good broker that you can trust that gives you good service, good support, good software, and good data. So the other one is you got to have First, you got to have the good broker. Then you got to have a decent software. You don't have to use Ninja Trader. That's what I use. I've been using it for 10 or 12, 13 years. So, sure, I'm not going to change. But there's other softwares out there that do, does everything we do that's cheaper than Ninja Trader. So you don't have to have Ninja Trader. But don't don't use a different one because it's cheaper thinking you're saving money because you'll never make money with a cheap trading software you'll be at a disadvantage you'll never you'll have more losers and it cost you more money and then the third thing is your data has to be come from a reliable data provider i know trading technology is good i know uh, cqg is good i use cqg i've used both of those there's a few others. I, I can't remember off the top of my head. I've used CQG for so long. And prior to that, I used trading technologies for a couple years. Uh, so really for the last 10 or 12 years, I've used one or the other. So I haven't used any of the other ones. But trust me, there's bad data providers out there. Make sure you get a good, reliable data rel uh, provider. And then the last one is your internet service. If you don't have good internet service, you could be losing packets. You can be losing data. You can be... Your trades can get delayed, your orders can get delayed, or whatever. Um, 
you got to have high speed, reliable internet. If you're living somewhere and your internet's up and down half the time, or you're trading off some snail mail internet speed, look, I know you're trying to save a dollar, but it costs. You, you, there's a certain, just like going into business with anything, there's certain costs you got to have. And this is a pretty low cost business to get into. But just remember that you can't skimp on those tools. If you are, you're just wasting your time because you're going to cost yourself money in the long run. So if you don't have enough money to buy those things right there, then don't trade live. Just keep saving your money and building your trading account and building your funds and just sim trade. However you have to do it. You know, if you have to take $1,000 and go open an account with a, with a broker, just so you can get a trading account, a free SIM account, then do it. It's worth it. Your money's just sitting there. You're not trading with it. You just have to put it in there to open your account. I know that my our broker will open you. If, if you've got enough money to open the account, I think it's a minimum of, I, I'm not sure what the minimum is anymore, to be honest, but I think you can open one for $1,000, $1,500. And you don't have to take a live trade. As long as you got the money in there, they will let you open an account and you can get a sim a free sim account and go at it so keep that in mind um th th you just can't skimp there you cannot skimp there if you do it's going to cost you money and, and it seems like think or swim i get more traders from there lately and um i don't know anything about them actually i'm gonna pause okay i took a minute to um just to see about Thinkorswim, and I didn't realize that was TD Ameritrade. I have a TD Ameritrade account. I do not day trade through TD Ameritrade, but I have an account with them. Uh, I use it for some of my longer term investments and stuff. And if you're trading with TD Ameritrade, you're at a disadvantage. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Um, I actually went to another broker here. I'm not going to name this broker. This is not our group broker, but. Uh, I asked them about TD Ameritrade, and uh, <laughs> their answer was data vendors and trading platforms are like politicians. There is no such thing as a good one, and I, boy, I have to kind of agree with that on the politicians. Uh, we usually all vote for the least worst guy, and that's the truth. So, uh, but it, but they go they go on to say that while Thinkorswim is division of TD Ameritrade and clears your trades with Direct Edge. Uh, Thinkorswim is one of the very, very worst trading platforms that you can use. You are using a horrible platform, and you do have a huge problem, which is not good. Which is what I figured when I, you know, I see so many people come from Thinkorswim, and I look at their chart, and I look at mine, and there's no comparison. So, um, you guys that are using TD Ameritrade, I, I don't want to burst your bubble, but you do not have good data. You do not have good ex as good at executions. Yeah. Uh, you can, you, you're just at a disadvantage and you're not, you, you're, you're trading against professional traders using professional tools. And while if you're just taking some swing trades here and there, think or swim is probably fine. You're paying double or triple what you ought to have to pay. So you're not really even saving any money. It's probably easier to open an account. You might have that issue. You might have that going. But, you, but you're at a disadvantage. You're trading to people that have instant access to the very best data, uh, and it can. You're just at a disadvantage. I, I don't even want to continue down this road. If you're using Think or Swim, think again. That's why. That's all I'm gonna say, uh, and I'll leave it at that. So, but you're at a disadvantage, and it's gonna cost you more money than it's gonna save you by trying to go. You can't trust their data. It's not coming directly from the exchange. I guarantee it. And uh, so and you're, it's probably filtered on top of that. So you're not getting all the ticks. But I'll show you a chart. I mean, I'm going to go over a trade. Uh, I'm going to try to get through some of this stuff. I may skip some of the stuff on my list today just so we can go through the trades. And I can sh compare you a couple of their charts compared to mine. So um, I'm just looking. The other thing people ask me about a lot lately is your account size. What kind? What size account do you need? Well, if you haven't doubled or tripled a SIM account starting with about 10,000, five or 10, at least 5,000, maybe I would say 10,000, then you don't even need to be thinking about trading live yet because you'll just be a donator. And for any of you that have never heard me talk about a donator before, the market needs donators. 
we need people that come in and lose every day because maybe 10 or 15 percent of all the traders are taking the other 85 or 90 percent's money and those people are all donators and you don't want to be a donator so don't learn on a live account trying to trade live you're just going to donate your money to somebody that knows what they're doing somebody that has better tools than you somebody that has more experience than you and somebody that understands how to read this chart right here in front of you that you're just guessing at so don't trade live save your money put it in an account and start saving it for when you and, and prove you can do it on the simulator first so like I said if you got to spend fifteen hundred dollars or whatever to open an account to get your to get a free sim account well then you got to look at it like that if you don't have a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars you don't need to be day trading because that's the that's the bare minimum that somebody trading singles and knows what they're doing needs and so don't think you can come into this with fifteen hundred dollars and learn and get anywhere because you're just wasting your time and I'm not trying to be negative here or, or talk anybody out of trading but you know me I'm gonna tell you the truth about it I'm not gonna sugarcoat it and uh, uh, generally what I recommend to a seasoned trader that has proven they can do this live and has learned and is winning at a high clip I suggest that they usually only keep about three times their needed margin so if you're let's just say you're trading singles and you need four hundred dollars you need probably fifteen hundred dollars in there in your trading account minimum and then you should be good because if you lose any more than that then you're not you shouldn't be trading live anyway and if you're winning at the right clip then you're always going to have some winnings in there too and just wipe that out at the end you know sweep it out at the end of every at least once a month I wouldn't you know don't leave a lot of money in your tra trading account because brokers brokers get in trouble brokers go broke and we had not had that happen in a long time but if you remember back in I think in 08 we had a few go bust and you know you don't want a lot of your money sitting in a broker's account earning them money just take out your profits and leave in there what you need which in my opinion should be you know no more than five times the margin you need but somewhere between three and five times your margin but that's only if you're win a, a consistent winner if you're a loser you're just going to be sending them money all the time but you shouldn't be trading anyway so it, it's like a catch-22 so if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing you need three to five times your margin so if you're trading singles do the math three times 400 that's 1200 I'd, I'd say you're gonna need at least 1500 most brokers are gonna probably require that 1000 to 1500 somewhere in there so but I um, then they did change our margin back to 400 again today I don't know if it'll last it may have just been because they knew it was a holiday and they may go back to the regular tomorrow if things are volatile but we'll see so um, keep that in mind but yeah three to five times your margin should be your minimum and, and I wouldn't keep much more than that because think bad things can happen and you don't want your money you don't want your a broker holding your money and them going bankrupt or whatever and you losing it those things happen so uh, some accounts are FDIC uh, backed and some aren't uh, that's one that that might be the only benefit of going with TD Ameritrade your account may be FDIC backed uh, but otherwise uh, you're you're just gonna lose money trading with those guys so uh, not to burst your bubble if you're trading with TD Ameritrade but I'm just telling you uh, you're at a huge disadvantage so let's see I want to talk about tick versus five minutes since we're on charts uh, people are want to trade different markets there's a reason we trade the ES I suggest that anybody wants to be a day trader trade the ES but most of you aren't going to listen to me anyway you're going to do what you want to do so if you're not trading the ES the way you find the market the, the right tick size is first open a five minute account or five minute chart I'm sorry not an account but there's a five minute chart I open that and then I open a tick chart and I try to get it as close as I can and you can see that looks pretty close I think we're backed out a little further on the other one maybe but you can see more of the trend on my chart than you can that five minute look how flat that looks 
So you're at a disadvantage if you're trading time-based charts as well. That's another one. If, you, if your charting service and broker can't give you tick charts, go to a broker that can because you're at a disadvantage. But there's a five-minute chart. But open that five-minute chart and then get your tick chart to where you've got the same number. It's close to the same number of bars and the same kind of little swings. You can't get it exactly. Just get it as close as you can, and that's where we start with our tick chart. That's how we found a 2,000 tick chart. I opened up a five-minute chart, then I opened up my tick chart, and I started playing with numbers till I found one that was close. But I decided tomorrow I was going to trade um, the Canadian dollar. I'd open up a five-minute Canadian dollar chart in futures, never trade Forex. I'd never touch it with a with a with a 10-foot pole because it's just like the other stuff is not regulated well enough and you'll lose money trust me so um, I open up a five minute tick chart in the Canadian dollar futures only futures um, and then I'll try to get my tick chart to look as close to that as I can I won't be able to get it exact it doesn't have to be exact but that's just a starting point and that's how you find the tick size to your chart uh, people will ask me well what about a three minute or a one minute uh, why not make it smaller? Well, what happens with those three minutes and one minute charts is that um, you start to get a lot of false triggers and stuff. And if you and if you try to get your chart much smaller than a 2,000 tick chart, you'll get a lot of false setups, a lot of false triggers, failed trades. There's a reason we do it. Everything you're trying to do when you come in here and start using my stuff, we've already tried it. Let me tell you a little secret. It took us, it took me, and there were some other traders involved in the very beginning in this a lot. Some of this, uh, most of this is my stuff. But, but I learned a little bit of my original price action from an old timer, and there used to be a couple other people that traded in the chart with me here, and we worked on this stuff together. As far as trying to find tick sizes and all that stuff. And so we've already done all experimenting for you. Every time you try to change something or do something different, I guarantee you we've already done and found out it doesn't work. And that's the reason we do what we do. So please don't try to tweak this, what we do, or change it to fit here or change it to fit there. I'm telling you, we've already done all that. We've already done all the experimenting and losing and learning the hard way for you. We got this down to a science. If you learn to do it, you will make money. So I hope that's clear. But yes, open a five minute tick chart. Try to get, or open a five minute time based chart and try to get your tick chart to match that as closely as you can and then start there. And if you need to tweak it a hundred ticks here and a hundred ticks there, uh, you might do that. You're, you're going to be within, I would say, you're going to, if, if you do it that way, you're going to get it within a, a couple hundred ticks. If it's a very vo high volatility, you're going to get it within 500. If it's a small, vo you know, small volume, you're going to get it within a hundred probably. So, and that's the other thing you can't, you can't use this strategy on low volume markets that have a lot of slippage. That's the reason we weren't recommending trading the MES in the beginning because the volume was too low. Now that the volatility's up, uh, a lot of people are trading it and saying they're not having any slippage problems. So I still haven't personally traded the MES. One day I might open a chart and try it, but just to just so I can have a little more, you know, when I when I tell you something about anything you ask me a question about, the first thing I'll tell you if I don't know, I'll just tell you straight up. I won't try to guess. I'll tell you I don't have any experience with that. This is what I do know or what I've been told, but it's not from my experience. But if it is from my experience, I'm going to tell you directly, uh, just like when I tell you don't trade Forex, I know because I I know from experience, and I tried multiple brokers, don't try to trade Forex because you will not make money. You will lose money in the long run. You might, if, if you're really good, you might get to break even. That's the best I've ever heard anybody really did was get to break even. Yeah, they're up for a week here, but then they lose it all back the next week. So in the long run, they're all, if you're at break even, that's probably the best you'll ever do in Forex. So I'm sure there's somebody that'll tell me they make money there, but if I don't see their trading statements, I'll never believe it. So yes, you have to use tick charts 
or you're going to be able to just, you don't have to use tick charts, but if you don't use tick charts, if you use a five minute chart, that would be my second. If you got to use a time based chart, use a five minute. But what you'll find out is you're carrying a knife to a gunfight. So how many times do you think you're going to win that battle? Probably never, but maybe if you're lucky every once in a blue moon. So tick charts. And if you have to go with time based five, but if you want to find the right tick chart, go to the market, open a five minute, and then try to get your chart, your tick chart, to look as close as you can to start right there, and that'll give you your start. Okay, one other thing I want to talk about is this trader sent me a trade today, and he was talking about a double top uh, starting the count over. And I said, I don't see a double top. top. Uh, can you? pointed out maybe I'm missing it or something so he sends me back this and he circled this and he was looking at this as a double top and starting his count right there I guess that's what he was wanting to do but uh, but anyway this is a two bar matching high this is not a double top now if this occurred at a swing high yeah you could say hey that's a double top but that's still the count zero really there because it's it's a two bar matching high so that's not a double even at a double even at a high that wouldn't necessarily be a double top it's just a two bar matching high you'd still be your count would be zero if it was at a swing high coming down through here your count's already at zero but that doesn't change it because you never broke higher there so it's just your count still whatever it was at this last high you can't see it on this chart but whatever your I think it made a new high up here. It was higher than these highs. So it's coming down and your count's still zero right there because it doesn't break higher. And that is not a double top. And if it was in the opposite direction uh, down here on the lows, it's not a double bottom. So I just thought I would mention that since he brought it up. And uh, make sure you don't get confused. That's a two bar matching high. It's not a double top. So it's just it's just still part of the same that's all part of the same move down so nothing's changed right here it's still just moving lower so hopefully that's okay here's the big picture today we had a range early on i had the highs up here and the lows down here actually i had the lows a little higher because the closes were right in there and really what we got here we had two legs down and then we started trading higher um see there's leg one and notice that we didn't get anywhere near leg two but it's still two legs down we just came up short but that's because we had really strong support down here at the overnight low again earlier when I first put my chart out this morning I had it up here but we didn't have much price action we only had maybe this much price action at the time and you can see at the time that this was the lows with the closes and this was the highs with the closes as the day progressed you can see we ended up finding more support across here at the lows and you had a little failed break lower it didn't last very long at all and that's what you expect on a range day but this is a range turns out your highs are right here in the middle and this is kind of a midline you can see we were actually getting resistance there early in the overnight and it continued to kind of act as a midline it gave us resistance there Gave us support on the way down, still went on through, and then it was acting as support and resistance again in the afternoon. So um, it's a range day. Hopefully, you could see that fairly easily. Now there it, there is a trend. There's like a little spiking channel with two tiers in it down. Then we found support here, and we had a two tiered channel that traded up the rest of the day. It's very flat. It's not real strong and really you had to use these shorter term trends and you could trade them up and down as the day went on so and it was real easy to find these trade most of these trades i marked today too so i'm going to go over them and there's a couple i'm going to talk about specifically hopefully that'll be helped but notice we had this trend on the way up this morning just got a little trend working up here and Notice you got a new high, pull back first entry, pull back second. Here's a second entry long, nice signal bar right off the key entry point, very close to the MA2, quick, easy trade. Uh, you got another second entry right here. I marked it in black. It's not very good, and that was one of the other 
topics I wanted to talk about. But notice that new high, you pull back, it breaks higher right there at your first entry. It doesn't make a new higher yet, and it starts correcting. So it did it all in one bar. It broke lower and then turned and went out the other side. When it went higher there, that's the second entry. Uh, I noticed that it was marked in black because it's right into the resistance. One thing you don't want to do is you want to have enough room to get out. Uh, notice here you had plenty of room to get out before you got back to the last high. But right here, you don't have much room. If you got enough room to get out, you probably could take that trade. But that's just really pushing it right there. So I marked that one in black. But notice you got a break, a couple of swings up. But you found resistance right here where you had resistance previous. That was that actually was left over from uh, Friday. And then we turn down. You don't really get a setup going down here. Uh, the only thing you got is a failed second entry long. If you'd have taken that right there, there was a trap. Uh, and somebody asked me, how do you, what confirms a trap? Generally, it will be, uh, it will rock it down real fast. This one is maybe a good example right here. Um, this is probably a better one. I'll show it to you when we get there. But that's the only trade you have to catch this short. Would have been a good one, but I, I'm not even going to circle those. I'm just doing the second entries that are easy for people to see. Notice we're working up here. First entry, you try to go higher. There's a second entry. Look how bearish that bar is right at the EMA after a leg down like that. So measure that leg. Look for a possible measured leg down and look at there. Almost perfectly to the tick before you got a little two-legged correction and then got another second entry short. That's a great setup. You don't get another second entry coming down, but you, but if you catch that one, you get a runner and you catch that run that whole leg down. Then you get down here to the low, first entry, second entry. And these have a matching high here. That's a two-bar matching high. That's still just the count zero. But, but that's a big bearish bar. You can go short one tick under that. Boom. There's another second entry right here. I didn't even mark this one. Notice you're moving up first entry. And then when it, it broke lower right there, that's because that's your signal bar. But but again, you, you could probably argue for that because it's almost three. It's right at the key entry point. So there's another one you might have taken. I didn't even mark it. But then you're, you are, you're moving along here and you're right off that trend line two more times and then you make a notice how you push lower pull back and you get that lower high right there it actually went higher and turned and went down could have entered there it's not a second entry though but now you hit off the low first entry second entry right at the ema right at the midline bearish bar another easy one then this now this is a trading range uh, the main reason I like this is you had to have enough room to get out before getting back to the low of that little range, which you do. Plus, it was a second entry. So you don't care as much about second entries in here. You have to get short at the high or the low. But if you see a second entry and get that opportunity as well, um, then it's usually a great trade. So and then you got a little repeat pattern right here that looks almost like this. So you might have gone short there. I didn't mark it because it's still part of that range, but all the same. Here's you another one. Uh, this actually doesn't break lower, but you can see there's two swings up right back there. Um, there's a lower high right here with a fairly bearish bar, but look how it's right into that support, and you don't have enough room right there. And that's what I was talking about at the, a minute ago. you got to make sure you got enough room to get out. Uh, because it, a lot of times it'll touch there and bounce instantly. Here you probably would have got, well, there's no problem. You would have had enough room, but I'd never recommend taking that trade into all that support without having enough room to scalp out first. So that's the reason that one's black. But it is still, notice that new low first entry and then second entry. So it is still a second entry short, and it still would have worked. Here's your another one. You're moving up. You're moving up. You get a first entry. Then it goes higher again and turns back down, makes a higher low right there. So when it breaks lower, it's a second entry short. There's you another one. Um, again, that's right into the support, but notice how we push through there first. So you've already kind of cleared that out. If you push, if, if it breaks lower and pushes through again, you'd probably be all right taking that one. But that it's still something you'd consider because of that support there. You could that one's almost close enough to argue that it's kind of uh, 
a little bit aggressive because it's into all that support. And notice I didn't mark anything else anything else on the way back until finally you get a new high pull back first entry pull back second entry long right there it is the first break of this trend line but we shot right on through it pulled back actually I think we had a no we didn't have a break on that one uh, so you had to be a little careful here but that's such a perfect second entry uh, They got two bar matching highs and uh, lows, but they're both bullish bars. So just go long right there. If it breaks above that, you'll probably get a scalp out of it at a minimum. But notice how that really turned out to just be one leg. And then you got your measured move down right here. So that's a two bar correction, a two legged correction. You can see that right there. There's your leg, then a correction and your second leg. That's a two legged correction. And generally, that will often be the center of the move. So measure that first leg up. And then look for your second leg up. And you can see that we went a little bit higher before. It. I absolutely can never grab what I want to grab. It moved a little bit higher before it turned back down again. But that would have been a perfect place. But guess what? You Well, you probably wouldn't have had this. Uh, two-tier channel yet so never mind about that but that, notice where that's at where that turned out to, close to where that turned out to be now another trader the reason I put this arrow on here I think this is it here this trader sent me this setup right here and he's asking you can't really see it but I think there's a fairly bullish bar right here it opens way up here, it trades way down there, and then it closes right back up here. So it's a fairly bullish bar. And you can see on his thinkorswim chart, I'm pretty sure this is thinkorswim, yep. Pull back first entry, pull back, and it broke higher one tick and then failed. That's a, that's a good example of a trap. Notice how it shoots down real fast. Because all these people that went long realize they're, they have to get out. And anybody that was getting long on this move up, realizes hey the trend must be over and they have to exit and see how it rockets down real fast and so that's a good sign of a trap whenever it rocket down you know when you see it only go a tick or two on a what should be you looks like a great entry to you it just means you got trapped and that's what traps do they fool you into entering in the wrong direction and you can see he draws he drew his trend line there it's not really off the well, yeah, it is. It's right off the closes. It looks like a good trend line. But let me show you my chart. Look at my chart. That's the same place on my chart. It's nowhere near my trend line. And I drew mine right off the closes. And actually, you could have argued that, hey, maybe I should have gone off that close. But it didn't fit on the upper side. You can see how well that fit right there. So if I'd have drawn it, even if I drew it there, that puts my trend line way down here. Nowhere near where he went along. And you can see that. And I don't have a second entry there either. You're moving down. I just have a first entry long. So you, that, I mean, that's the difference between good data and, and junk data or bad charting. I mean, I can't explain why his chart looks the way his does compared to mine. But it doesn't look anything like mine. Really what he probably should have done, he, he has his trend line here. This, he probably should have said, hey, maybe this is a midline and copied this and drug it over and it would have been running up through there and this would be all below his trend line. So you just couldn't get the trend line off these lows. I see why he likes it because he's got a second entry long right off the EMA with what looks like a trend line working up there. But I doubt you could have made this trend line. Maybe you could have made it fit on the other side. I don't know. But... Uh, you can see my chart looks nothing like that. First of all, I don't have a second entry. That's a first entry. And second entry is not till way down here. It's not anywhere near my trend line. It is off an EMA, but I wouldn't take a first entry off the EMA up here after a measured move up. A little further than a measured move up. I already showed you that. So I'd be expecting prices to turn down soon. So, and that's definitely, it, it broke higher and failed and trying to ran down. That's a trap. 
But anyway, I hope that's clear. And uh, the other trader, only thing I can tell you is probably think or swim data. We're 35 minutes here, so I'm going to push on through. Notice the new low, first entry, second entry. Man, look at that. And now you're looking for a measured move down from up here. There's your two-legged, probably your center of your pattern. Well, what do you know? I wonder how that happens. Perfect measured move down and it reverses. Man, you see this stuff over and over and over. Notice right there, first entry, second entry. Right off the trend line. Boom. See how easy these are to find? Here's another one. I, I marked it in black because it's close to those lows. But first entry and it tried to go higher and you got a second entry short right there. Still would have worked, but it's just not a very good setup. But I marked it because it is right off that trend line. But you got to be concerned about this coming up. Then you're working higher. And just wait. And you do get a break in a new high, but you still get two legs back to the EMA and a nice bullish bar. And so you figure you might get, a lot of times when you get a break, you get two legs. So there's your first leg. And what do you know? Another measured move up. Two legs to a new high and then boom, look at it go. And I marked this because the trader that sent me the other chart where you had the little two bar matching high was right in here somewhere. And he went long right here. So if he had drawn his trend line down here, he'd have probably said, hey, maybe prices are working back to this trend line. But either way, you got a downtrend working here and you hadn't had a break of it yet. So wait till you get a break in a new low. He went long here. Yes, it worked because you're so far away from the EMA. And I get why he liked that because that's, a, that's definitely way overdone. But I can tell you how many times it'll break one or two ticks there and then turn and run down here and then run up. So wait on the proper setup because if by going long there, he had reinforced a bad trade. That's why this arrow's on here just to mark that out. I didn't want to forget to, not to talk about it. And that's why that arrow was on there to talk about that guy's trade. But notice what happens. You get the break and then you get two legs down. And where does it bounce? Right off that lower trend line that I drew up through there. Perfect, I mean, perfect setup. Oops. Didn't mean to go way back there. But you get the break, two legs down, and look at that bullish bar. So technically, there's two little, two measured legs down right there, and a measured move, and second entry, boom. And then if you really thought that was too early, then notice what happens. You makes a higher high and then first entry and then the second entry long right there on a higher low. But that's definitely a second entry. Now you're making higher highs and higher lows. And then it gives you another one right into the, it's already into two o'clock, so I didn't mark that one. So this is 40 minutes, way longer than I wanted to go, but this is all good stuff. So, I mean, look at all those easy trades I just showed you. If you just wait on second entries with the trend and you understand what prices are doing, but it's a, range day and once we went higher here too you should have expected that we're probably headed back up here not back down here we were only coming back here to test that trend line again and then it went higher and guess where it found resistance up here at the top and both sides of the ema working down the middle so i'm going to wrap it up because it's going to take forever for this video to, to process and get uploaded so uh Hope that was all helpful to you. We'll be back again to do it tomorrow. I'm done for today. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.